Okay, so WWDC is now over, and I gotta say, it was it was awesome, but weird at the same time. I, I felt like the structure was just really strange because normally they would talk about iOS, uh, then iPadOS, but now they talked about watchOS and they left iPadOS until the very end. We also had some new Mac stuff, so loads of announcements and loads of new features. Um, but yeah, like I said, it was weird because of one specific announcement. Honestly thought this was a meme, <laughs> but uh, it was actually real. We have this iPhone camera attachment for the Mac. I'm not even kidding. And you can use the iPhone as a webcam for your Mac. You know how everyone was complaining that MacBooks and the new studio display has a really bad camera? Well, <laughs> Apple took it a bit too seriously. Like the whole idea is that you're essentially doing double streaming. The iPhone is streaming the video to the Mac and then the Mac is streaming that footage to the person that you're talking to. So I'm not exactly sure if we're gonna get any delay, but it is weird, um, and there is a cool part about it, which is it's gonna use the ultra-wide camera on the iPhone to be able to see your desk. So you can have some notes on your desk and the other person will be able to see it. So it is cool in that regard. I think if you don't already have a webcam, it can be quite cool, but if you already have a MacBook with a webcam or even the studio display, which I know it's pretty bad, but I, I don't see people just uh, attaching their iPhone every time they wanna do a, a video call. But okay, on to the more serious announcements. Um, my favorite serious announcement was um, the new MacBook Air. Like, it was pretty much exactly how we envisioned it in our concept. Like, literally, we got it shaved pretty much perfectly. Uh, unfortunately, the colors are not, you know, that rainbow style colors that uh, they were rumored to come in. It only comes in four colors. So there's a new blue, which looks awesome. It's like navy blue, so I do like that. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much the same design that we envisioned. Still fanless, it's got the M2 chip, which is, again, same as we all expected. 5 nanometer process and all that, and 8-core CPU, 10-core GPU. I think the most unexpected thing about this new MacBook Air is that the bezels are thicker than on the MacBook Pro. So I feel like Apple's, in a way, doing a similar thing to what they did with the iPad Air, where, you know, they could have just given it the same bezel as the Pro, but they decided not to, to make it look inferior. I also found it really odd how Apple actually kept not just the old MacBook Air at the same price, so they didn't make it cheaper, and the new MacBook Air is more expensive, but they also kept the MacBook Pro, the 13-inch MacBook Pro, they gave it an M2 chip, so it's the same design, and that thing is more expensive than the MacBook Air, the new one, which makes no sense, because with this MacBook Pro, you have the old design, the M2 chip, and a fan. So you're literally paying for a fan, right? 100 pounds or 100 dollars extra for just a fan, whereas the Air has the new design and the extra colors, and it's cheaper. Yeah, we'll be doing a separate video on the MacBook Air. There's just loads of changes, so definitely stay tuned for that video tomorrow. I also found it odd how they haven't updated the iMac with the M2 chip, um, or they haven't given us the new Mac Mini with the M2 chip. So we just got two new Macs, the MacBook Air and the 13th MacBook Pro, literally the ones that were rumored and leaked for the longest period of time. Something that I found so odd was in terms of macOS, like I think they talked about macOS for like a minute <laughs> at most. Um, and the biggest new feature in macOS is something called Stage Manager, which essentially lets you focus on just one main app that you're working with, and then you can see the other apps on your left. Uh, and then you can click on those sections to basically bring forward another app. And I don't know, it's just a bit weird. I feel like um, it clashes with App Expose quite a bit, but this does work really well on the iPad. So the biggest, the iPad got quite a few upgrades, but the biggest one is this stage manager. So the idea, the way it works is you can simply swipe up from the right corner to activate Stage Manager. And you can actually use two apps side by side and you can still resize the windows, but you are a bit limited in terms of what you can actually do with them. So you can only have two open at the same time and then uh, you can select a different group of apps to bring that forward. So that's pretty awesome. We finally have proper window management. Uh, it's not quite as good as on macOS, but it is sort of like in between what we have on uh, iPadOS at the moment. Uh, so I'm a big fan of that. And the iPadOS also got uh, external display support, like proper external display support, meaning that uh, you no longer get those black bars that you used to. So I think that overall iPadOS is a pretty big upgrade. Um, the only downside is that a lot of these features, Stage Manager and also uh, the external display support, only work on the M1 iPads. So the latest iPad Pro and 
uh, the M1 iPad Air. Like they even added a display scaling option so you can actually scale the display down just like on macOS and make the text smaller and easier to read. And that too requires an M1 chip, which is weird. Like, I don't really get why. I also found it odd how they haven't really talked about tvOS at all. Like, no mention of tvOS at all. Uh, they did talk about watchOS, which is getting some pretty big upgrades. Like, my favorite one has got to be the improved sleep tracking. I track my sleep every single night, and uh, the default sleep tracking app currently on watchOS 8 is borderline unusable like it doesn't really track anything right it's very very basic so i have to use uh, sleep cycle which is a different app which can actually track the stages of my sleep and now i can finally use the apple watch because yes it does support sleep stages tracking i also really like how uh when you're doing a running workouts you actually get different heart rate zones on your apple watch so you can actually know if you're working too hard or if you're not uh pushing yourself enough so i'm really looking forward to trying these out uh, especially the sleep tracking there's a couple of new watch faces too although two of them are simply revamped uh, old watch faces and two of them are indeed new which uh, i do really like the look of but obviously wwc is a software event and the biggest announcement by far in terms of you know how long apple actually talked about it uh, was iOS 16. And most of the leaks were actually present in iOS 16. We have, as expected, a redesigned lock screen, which is completely new. Uh, we also have a redesigned notification center, which is a bit strange. I gotta say, my favorite thing about iOS 16 is definitely the new lock screen, but it is a bit weird, as in, it kind of looks like an Android lock screen. Like, you can change the font of the clock, uh, and you can also change the color, but I don't know, I, I, I just feel like it looks it doesn't look like iOS. You can now add widgets to the lock screen uh, so you can track even complications from your Apple Watch, like the activity ring, uh, HomeKit stuff, like, you know, how many of your lights are turned on and the temperature in your home. So it is really cool because you get to see a lot of new info on the lock screen. So that's awesome. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't really get to see any uh, any preview of that upcoming, presumed upcoming, uh, always on display. So we'll probably see that in September, but I do think that an always on display with iOS 16 would make even more sense now that we have all of these widgets and info cards. So yeah, you can customize the time, you can add widgets, you can also change the wallpaper in a pretty unique way. So it seems like you can now have portrait lock screens, um, sort of like the portrait mode uh, watch face on the Apple Watch. So you can change the background automatically using portrait data, so that is pretty cool. Although, I don't know, just the design and the way you're supposed to interact with the lock screen and change all of those options feels a bit, I don't know, not so intuitive. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm really happy that we get more customization options. If you take a look at Android and iOS a few years ago, iOS was non-existent in terms of customization. Now you can change the icons of apps. You have an app drawer, essentially, <laughs> the app library. You have widgets, on-screen widgets and now you can customize the lock screen. So I think it's only a matter of time until Apple gives us even more customization options with you know, the lock screen and who knows, maybe even custom fonts. Like that, that would be so weird to see on iOS, but I feel like Apple is definitely heading into that direction of offering users what they want. And something else that I really liked about iOS 16 uh, was the new focus mode system. So I've actually used focus modes in the past to separate my work and my personal uh, home pages, and I had different ones and they actually activated based on my location, which is really cool, you can do that. But what they changed in iOS 16, now you can basically have focus modes for a lot more things throughout the system, like email messages, uh, even the lock screen. So you, have, you can have different rules uh, and have those automatically change which is really cool. So now if you want to have like two completely different phones, one for work and one for personal use, you don't need to buy two separate phones. You can just have one and, uh, you know, use that single iPhone. I think my overall thoughts on this WWDC are one, a lot of stuff happening, <laughs> like a lot of features and just a lot of announcements. Two, I was just shocked, honestly, to see that iPhone camera attachment. That was, that, that was just comedy. Uh, but anyways, I just wanted to give you like a quick rundown of, of my thoughts and um, we'll be doing separate super detailed videos. This was just like more of like a live video, but we'll be doing very detailed videos on all of the announcements. So a lot of uh, iOS hidden features, also uh, MacBook Air things you didn't know. I'm working on a list of some interesting findings. Yeah, it's pretty late. It's like uh, 10 p.m. here. Uh, in the UK. But yeah, this was just a quick updated video. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think of all the announcements from this WWDC. Uh, and yeah, stay tuned for a lot of videos starting from tomorrow. I'm Daniel, this is Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one.
Sinoptech, signing out. Cheers.